We're still trying to fix us. Sorry. Okay. There we are. Yeah. Maybe let's do this. About. You keep going off though. Okay. No, but anyway, no. <laughs> we're good. We're here. <laughs> hi. Okay. <laughs> hi. Um, rainy day here in Lawrence. So today we're talking about canola oil, right? Because we're just not really, you know, I love what she says. She says great things. So anyways, um, and she's going to tell you the great things too. Mm -hmm. So in case you don't know us because you're new, Welcome, and I am Dr. Smith, and I'm from Accomplished Health and Wellness, and I um, do family medicine, and this is Heather Fiore, and she is from Free State Nutrition, and she does nutrition. Yes, I do. <laughs> all kinds. All kinds. She works with all kinds of people. So if you're having questions or you're needing assistance with mm -hmm. um, what you're eating, she's a great resource, and so you can always contact her. Um, and if you aren't sure, she, you have a Facebook site that has all your information on it, right? Yep. Do you have a website? I have a website. What's your website? Freestaynutrition.com. There you go. Yeah. All right. Tell so us now you testimonials know. and yes, all the details about what I do and then how to schedule and then a phone call. Can they me. like email or phone you? Yeah. Either call way. You, I mean. But there is like, uh, you can schedule a phone call so we can spend like some time. A little time. Yeah. Just figuring out what, what you need and can I help you? There you go. Yeah. All right. So that and and like that call is that free? Free. That calls free people. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. So today we're going to talk about canola oil because uh -huh. there's just like, is it good? Is it bad? You know. So much drama. It, it is. It is with all these oils. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so a lot of questions I'm about oil. I'm still kind of up in the air um, about it, and so that's why we're going to talk about it. Yes. <clears throat> so. Uh huh. Canola oil. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Where does it come from? Well, there's a plant, a canola plant. Really? Yeah. Huh. And that's where it comes from. It's not like, you know, totally invented and it's not this foreign thing. Manufactured. <laughs> no, like it's a plant that grows just like any other. Mm -hmm. And then it gets processed into oil. I, I just, think that's the problem. It's the processing. Yeah. It's um Yes, yes. Because the processing it's Refined, bleached, and deodorized. I know. None of that sounds good. I know. <laughs> deodorized. <laughs> like when I was um, uh, reading about this process, I was thinking that, you know, they're deodorizing it. They're just spraying it with some secret. No, just kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, totally. but, but it's funny that they have to do these things in order for us to eat it because it smells funny. And so mm -hmm. in order for people to be okay with it, they deodorize oh, it to take that too. smell away. Totally. And then they yeah, bleach weird. it. Um, and that doesn't that, sound good either. That doesn't sound good either. No. Um, so, you know, actually this process um, is it, what they do is they crush the plant mm -hmm. material and then they usually will use the seeds and they'll express the oil from it. Um, and so that oil extraction technique they use is boiling it um, at, but they do like a low boiling solvent and the mm -hmm. solvent is really where the problem comes in because they Correct. use hexane yeah um and then they get and that hexane pulls the rest of the oil out and yes. so there's some in there mm -hmm. right right and hexane isn't so good for us hexane is not so good I, in no. theory it's trace amounts it is actually mm -hmm. it's trace amounts mm -hmm. um the so, i just watched a little video actually there's a there's a video you? that I'm not sure it really like helps their case, but there is a video you can watch of how this whole thing. Do you know down. that's um, that's funny because mm -hmm. I was reading and their justification um, kind of was funny to me, and I was like, yeah, I'm not really buying that justification, but okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I actually was reading this article. I like to go to the Harvard um, mm -hmm. University site, and yeah. they have a great blog on a ton of things. And so they did do one on canola oil. Yes. And so this, um, something that people should know is that this technique has been used since the 1930s to extract oil. So it's not like it's, it's a new there. process. Not and they're constantly trying to make it better. Right. So that they're, you know, the foods are more nutritional. Right. So, yes. And the oils. Um, yes. So the what they were saying was that, you know, you said it's trace amounts. 
that there's no evidence that trace amounts actually really are dangerous to human consumption. Mm -hmm. My only thought is there's no evidence now. <laughs> Right. Maybe no evidence doesn't mean that you're in that, the clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so this has been established um, that refined vegetable oils contain 0.8 milligrams of residual hexane per kilogram of oil. That sounds like a lot of oil. of oil. A kilogram? A kilogram, yeah. So it actually is. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, so there, but here's the justification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the justification is that it's established that the amount of hexane ingested from all food sources is less than 2% of your daily intake from other sources like gas fumes. Mm -hmm. So you're breathing in more hexane with your gas fumes than you are eating it. So we're like just all wrong and how we're getting all riled up about canola oil and we should probably be, probably be worried about gas fumes, gas fumes. probably mm -hmm. yeah so anyways what's so great yeah. about canola oil well so um it is great for a number of reasons um monounsaturated fats right omega-3 it's threes. high in those right yes. it's like 63 percent yeah like monounsaturated higher than olive oil mm-hmm Okay, which we know that olive oil is great. We all love olive oil. Yes, we're yeah. big fans of olive oil. Yep. But it's higher in omega in um, monounsaturated, and then it also has omega three fa fatty acids. Yes. Which olive oil does not have. Yes. Um, Do you know? I thought it was interesting when I was reading that um, it's kind of sad. So it does have up to about 11% of omega-3 mm -hmm. in it. Yes. But it's kind of sad because um, when you start out before all the washing and refining, it's actually more like 20%. Is that right? Yeah. And then it goes down with all the washing product process down mm -hmm. into like 9 to 11%. But it still is there. Right. So right. And more there. than any other oil, right? Like there's some yeah. in soybean oil also. But yeah. I bet people who don't like canola oil don't like soybean oil either. Yeah, Just okay. guessing. Um, we'll have to talk about that one day. Yeah. <laughs> we probably should. Yeah. So there's yeah. less um, saturated fat. It's very okay. low in saturated fat. Yes. And then yeah. um, and then there's a higher burn point too. So like it's good for yes. frying. Yes. If you're and going that's actually to why I use it. It's for the whole frying bit. Right. And because they do all this deodorizing business, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. So it's not going to like yes. mess with your food. Like olive oil has a flavor. Yeah. And, and it, it can changes your food. Yeah, it can enhance the food that you're making. Depends on what it is though. Sometimes it doesn't enhance it very nicely either. Yeah. 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 But sometimes it does. And sometimes it doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, so the other thing that I found interesting was that it also um, contains phytoesterols that decrease your absorption of cholesterol. Yeah. So that's another good thing. Yeah. And when you said low in saturated fat, it's only like 7% saturated fat. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so you got your omega-3s and you got your monounsaturated and you got the phytoesterols. Esterols. Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, triple threat for cholesterol. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's got some pros for sure. Yes, yeah. Um, and yeah. the cons are really that it's it's really the refining process. Mm -hmm. So refining and the bleaching and the you know, yeah, yeah. Which you know, it just it doesn't appeal to us when we know these things. We're like, ah, I don't like that. I don't. That doesn't sound that good. That doesn't sound. You good. wouldn't like hearing how most of your food is made. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, so the issue, though, with the refining process mm -hmm. is the trans fat that it creates mm -hmm. because it does create some trans fats and we can't be, you know, we can't wash, we can't like, it does that. Yeah. We can't deny it. We can't. Yeah. Um, so it does contain low levels of trans fats um, and that's because of the deodorizing process and that's the final step. And that's the final step. Um, and that's uh, a step to make it, give it that bland taste and mm -hmm. that like no smell. Um, just kind of, this was a justification for it. Just kind of a side note. 
um, cattle and sheep and cow's milk ha is like two to five percent natural trans fat. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, you're already eating some. You are I guess. eating some. Unless, um, I don't know. Unless, like, are you still eating it if you're getting the um, grass fed beef and stuff? Because I don't know. I don't know either. But the other question is, like, is there something different about natural trans fats and like yes that's another good question as well which yes. we don't really we touch don't about. really know so um during that deodorizing process um canola oil is actually subjected to temps greater than 200 degrees celsius and um, that's to remove some free fatty acids and phospholipids. Mm -hmm. um, and so during this time um, there's a small amount of unsaturated fat um, omega-6 and omega-3s that are transformed into trans fatty acids. So it actually does both of them, omega-3 and omega-6. Right. Yeah. Um, but And so here's just another side note. Mm -hmm. All right, so we already talked about the beef. Right. And the cattle and the milk and whatever. Yeah. So canola oil for trans fats is like 1.9 to 3.6%. Okay. But olive oil is 0.5, so there must be some also in there. Hmm. See? Yeah, so it's in there. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know. Well, I mean, I think overall there's a lot of, you know, good things for heart health going on in canola oil. Yes. And I like to think that that mm -hmm. offsets yep. the trans fat. Yes. The other thing is, um, I think there's a difference in where you're using it. Mm. Okay. So um, there's a lot of oxidative uh, reactions that happen if you're using it for prolonged deep frying. So okay. say like French fries at McDonald's. I bet they use vegetable oil or yeah, something they cheaper. They don't use but canola oil. No, but if they did, mm -hmm. but it's like those, you know, restaurants that are using them and they're using the same oil all mm -hmm. day long. Mm -hmm. That creates a bigger problem than if you're like, okay, so my mom, she will take Crisco. It's like the worst thing. That's our face when we hear Crisco. <laughs> Okay, so she takes Crisco and then she will make the fake French fries with the crinkle cut. <laughs> and then she got, I told you that story about my daughter, and she was like, How does she get crinkles in her? Because <laughs> they're fake. Yeah. Um, so yeah. she'll take it and then she puts it back into the container and then she'll use it a couple more times. And so, um, with canola oil, with any of the oils, that's I think really where this is going. Mm. If you're reusing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, then it's going to create more oxidative reaction, mm -hmm. which is, you know, creates free radicals and cancer producing stuff that's not good for you and trans fats. And so don't do that. Right. Are there a better, so say you wanted to use canola, because I'll say I use canola oil um, here and there, I use it to make French fries when I make um, real French fries, like from real potatoes that you cut up. Right. So I use it for that. Mm -hmm. And um, there is one that has olive oil in it, so it makes me feel better because I add a little olive oil in. Um, and it actually doesn't taste any different. So I don't okay. know. Maybe the olive oil is deodorized too. I don't know. But yeah. anyways, whatever. Good question. Um, so when you're... Um, so I don't use it that often, right? You know, cause I don't make French fries that often. I think that's the trick right there, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about moderation. Moderation. We always go back blah, to that. Blah, blah. But moderation. really, but as if you're looking for something, say you're not using it that often yeah. and you're wanting to be health conscious about it and mm -hmm. you're okay with using the canola oil because okay. you've decided that it has some heart healthy stuff in it and yes. so you're okay with the little bitty trans fats. Is there a better way to get like... A better kind of oil, like canola oil? Yeah. Maybe? I mean, there's such a thing as like cold pressed. 
Okay. So then it doesn't have all this it doesn't processing have the hexane, business. Right? right. 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 I think it's really hard to find and it's probably really expensive. Yeah. But that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Like that's I've for never like only using it every so often. Right. And that's the kind of the point is like, you're only doing this once in a while. Um, if you're, if you're doing a lot of deep frying, you might think, Hmm, maybe I should cut back deep on fry. deep frying. Like maybe that's not a great thing to do all the time. Yeah. So um, if you're doing it only every once in a while and you're not like reusing your oil, then it's probably, okay. it's probably perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah. And then like in general, like mix up your oils because, yes. you know, if you only use one kind of oil, what if we decide, you know, hey, you know what? Like all these things are healthy, but when you like use it so much, it can cause this. I mean, isn't that like every food? Yeah. If you overdo anything yeah. it's not going to be good for you right so just mix it up variety mm -hmm. in every food group and with your oils yeah there you go i like it it's as simple as that it really is that simple and there's lots of oils out there, there are lots of oils. avocado oil peanut mm -hmm. oil mm -hmm. um coconut are we going there? Well, I mean, it has a serves a purpose, right? It gives it a does. certain flavor that you might use, or you That's might use butter. Mm. Oh gosh, you see, might. I love butter. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, and I like to put coconut oil on my skin. Yeah, see, it does serve. There's a no saturated fat when you put it on your skin. See, serves a purpose. <laughs> um, it's a great massage oil too. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So, there you go. See another purpose. Um. I think it might be comedogenic though, meaning it creates acne. Oh, just so you know. That I don't know about. I think it. Be. I think it is. So you might want to, um, you know, if you use it for massage oil, maybe wipe it off wipe afterwards. Wipe it off. But yes. See, even the simple solution. Yes. Still do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really, what it comes down to is that the canola oil isn't all that bad. It's okay mm -hmm. in moderation. Moderation. Do you use it? Yeah. Yeah. I do. What other oils do you use? Uh, mostly olive oil and canola. But I actually know that's not true. We have peanut oil and then we have um, sesame oil. But I mean, those, you know, are very specific purposes. For, yeah. 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 Okay. So mm -hmm. there we go. It was a simple topic today. Yeah. I'm not sure what we have in the future for Gosh. us. We have nothing on our list. Oh, no. Them. It's going to be a surprise topic. Yeah. Um, that we're going to brainstorm and come up with for next week. Mm -hmm. And if you have an idea, you can give us some. <laughs> Help us out so we don't yeah. have to. Let us know what your questions are. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully you can bring some sunshine to us because we're tired of the rain. Please. Okay. So we have um, cooked our canola oil to death. And now we're going to put it to rest. And be okay eating it here and there, but not after 12 hours of use. And we will see you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.